back sets. We thought you were going to show a lot of those this year, and we've seen a lot. And they've had some big touchdowns on them in the passing game. Just what, what kind of those two back sets kind of do when you can do a bunch of different stuff out of them? Does that make it more difficult for you guys like this? Yeah, I think that's a, for us, that's a running set. You know, so people have to put an extra hat in the box and then uh, be able to throw the ball at it as well. So um, you can do both. You know, it just makes it a little more multiple and uh, kind of forces the defense's hand a little bit. They don't bring somebody down to the box when we have numbers in the run game. So. Um, Historically, one of, our, one of our better passing sets has been that uh, some of those two back sets. It seemed like you guys moved the ball pretty well on the ground. How did you feel about the performance this past week? Yeah, always more, always more to be had on the ground there. But uh, um, proud of the way those guys ran and, and, and kind of finished runs, and, and we're kind of hitting it pretty hard. So uh, I'd like to build on that for you know this week and, and keep uh, keep the ball rolling. Was that more about what LSU was showing, or was that? Having more confidence and, and getting Woody back and, and Dylan and them getting more experience, or I, th I think they did a great job up front. You know, I think they were taking care of uh, taking care of business and moving guys around for us. And then, uh, you know, we were able to see the holes and, and then hit them hard. But yeah, I mean, they're going to give you some run, you know, some run stuff, and we have to be uh, be able to exploit it basically. What have you seen from Texas A&M so far? Yeah, sound defense. You know, they've uh, they have given them some rushing yards, which is, which is uh, makes me excited. But um, really good defense. You know, they they kind of settle down when you get to the red zone goal line area um, try and keep you out of the end zone and that's been something that we need to be uh, better at we need to finish this week in the end zone coach O said that they actually adjusted a little bit when you guys were in the ball really well you know how did how did they adjust their defense at all like you know did, did you notice they adjusted anything to make it a little bit more difficult well, they went they went to a four down front and i think that we we hit about two passes down the field and scored a touchdown they went back to the three down front after that so that was the adjustment and then uh went right back to what he, kind of the game plan came in with yeah. What have you seen so far uh, uh, from Bull and, and Simeon on special teams? Obviously, there's a process you got to do to get on the field for offensive reps. But what have you seen from them so far on special teams? Yeah, Simeon's turned into a, basically like a four-unit guy. So he's on every every one of the big four special teams, so, which is great to see. You know, so he's getting a bunch of reps, live action. You know, uh, SEC play last week for him. Um, Bull, same thing. I mean, he gets shot out of a cannon on some punt return stuff, trying to block punts. Um, the more they can do with that, then it just kind of breaks me and makes my job a little bit easier. Um, keeps building that trust for for me and his teammates to put him out there on offense. JJ Jernigan's gotten some action last couple of games. What have you thought of him? Had a solid camp. You know, he's a uh, he's an older, uh, savvy veteran, um, very smart, and one of the strongest guys I have in the, in the, in the room as well. So, trust him to go out there in some of those uh, sets where he's putting his hands on somebody and blocking, and um, always kind of executes his assignment. You know, catches balls and, and gets the ball to the field when he gets his opportunity. So. Um, great guy to have in, in your in your group and uh, somebody that the young guys can learn from. You got a young group who's probably never played in an environment like this one this weekend. I mean, how do you kind of prepare them for that? What, what's the message going into that game? Yeah, it's just uh, got to be excited. I mean, you can you know, be a bunch of energy in the air. You got to use that kind of some of that negative energy for, for a positive for us, you know, kind of get us motivated. But, um, you know, we travel at the same routine at home in a way. So it's uh, same football field, same size. I and mean, we're staying in a nice hotel and eating some food, so let's go out there and just do our job, you know, just go out and execute plays, you know. How much, you know, obviously the offense has been close to clicking for, for 60 minutes and shown a lot of incons inconsistency, but uh, how's the mood of the guys? I'm sure they see their mistakes on film and, and see the correctable things. That's the thing. I mean, you're, you're two, three plays away from, from sitting at a, you know, undefeated record. So it doesn't take a lot to go into a meeting on Sunday and, and you pull up two plays from each game and say, you know, we win this game by 10 points, win this game by seven points. So uh, I think the mood is good, you know, and I think it's uh, it's challenging the guys, and they want to make sure that again they finish in the end zone this week instead of kind of driving the ball up and down the field without uh, punching it into the uh, punching it in for six points. What did 